Hi folks, it's uh, Chet from Tag Along with Chet. Well, uh, it's uh, it's coming up to winter. Well, let's see, end of November, coming up to end of November. And uh, I've had a uh, question asked of me by one of my viewers. And I think I've posted this once before, maybe about three years ago, but I was laying underneath the airplane out in a field somewhere where I used to keep my airplane. And that was obviously before I got my hangar. So we're sitting in my hangar office right now where it's nice and warm. It's uh, cool in the hangar. So the uh, question came up as to what do I use for a winter kit on my aircraft. Now I, uh, <laughs> I've got my own way of doing it. So uh, I don't know if it's right or wrong. But you know I went through all the Lycoming instructions out here about preheating the aircraft, uh, engine start in cold weather and so forth and uh, and like Coleman comes out and says the use of preheat will facilitate starting during cold weather and is required when engine has been allowed to drop to a temperature below plus 10 Fahrenheit minus 12 centigrade and uh, and then plus uh, 20 Fahrenheit to uh, minus 6 centigrade for dash 76 engine models but anyway this I'm, I'm referring strictly now to uh, my uh, my Piper Cherokee which has got a 150 horsepower engine and it's the old 320. Anyway they come through with lots of stuff here about the use of a heated dipstick is not approved and to preheat the uh, engine using hot uh, air use a high volume hot air heater and uh, so basically goes through all that preheat stuff okay and uh, they do all the stuff it's actually if you want to look it up it's uh, service instruction number 1505 uh, engineering aspects are FAA approved and this was dated way back in July 1st 2002 and that's the uh, Lycoming um, uh, Textron company uh, approval and uh, basically it models affected are all Lycoming aircraft engines so I've been through all of this and uh, you know uh, it's great I, uh, I got no problem with this I, I follow this basically uh, uh, to a letter but nowhere along the line does it say anything about the engine as far as Lycoming is concerned with what to use as a winter kit like they you know you talk about winter uh, winterization plates on a on a on a uh, on an aircraft now i've owned about five different aircraft cessna models pipers and you name it and living uh north of the 49th out there out here uh, i uh, use a winterization kit which you can actually make there's nothing uh, high tech about the stuff at all and uh I've got another thing out here which is the Lycoming operating in cold weather and uh, I can't even remember what publication this is yeah it's uh, service instruction number 1014 and uh, that's uh, I read that through all of that and basically all it start comes out with is, is uh, how to operate the engine in cold weather and uh, uh, how to prime the engine when you're uh, <laughs> when priming a carburetor engine and so forth anyway you can read through this I'm not going to read the whole thing it's uh, it's about four pages long and uh, it does come out and it says engine operating temperatures and another item that is not usually given in enough consideration in cold weather we usually are very cautious about high oil temperatures which we know is detrimental to a good engine health while a low oil temperature uh, uh, is easier to accept. The desired oil temperature range for a Lycoming engine is from 165 degrees to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. If the aircraft has a winterization kit, it should be installed when operating in outside air temperatures that are below 40 degrees to 45 degrees Fahrenheit range. No winterization kit is supplied in the engine uh, if no winterization kit is supplied in the engine is not equipped with a thermostatic bypass valve it may be necessary to improvise a means of blocking off a portion of the airflow to the oil cooler keeping the oil temperature above the minimum recommended temperature is a factor in engine longevity low operating temperatures 
do not vaporize the moisture that collects in an engine as the engine breathes damp air for normal combustion. So anyway, that's uh, when the uh, minimum recommended oil temperatures are not maintained, oil uh, should be changed more frequently than normally recommended than the normally recommended 50 hour range. This is necessary in order to eliminate the moisture that collects and uh, contaminates the oil. Now anyway, so that's about the only thing they say about a winterization kit, but they, they don't come supplied with it. So how do you block off that cold air that comes into your engine? Well, there's various ways. I know if you look on the internet, just look it up. There's guys on YouTube out there as well that have shown you how to uh, actually manufacture one out of a piece of aluminum. Just take a piece of aluminum and uh, measure the uh, parameters of your oil cooler inlet, which is usually located on the front of the, uh, the aircraft, and, uh, and build one. Make one. No big deal. But there's a lot better way of doing it, I think. And it's a lot quicker. And I just block it off. And what I do is I use this tape. This is aluminum tape. Or a, I, I think it's aluminum tape. It's metalized type tape. You can see it. It's nice silvery stuff. And it's got a sticky surface. You just peel off the backing. And what I do is I normally just stick it right on the, uh, on the oil cooler. I've experimented with it and uh, gradually what will happen is if you block it off totally, you might get about 140 degrees Fahrenheit on your oil temperature, uh, depending of course what the temperature is outside. But in the cooler temperatures, uh, it's going to be awful tough to get it up to 180 degrees. So there's other ways that you can start blocking things off and this is what came with my airplane when I bought it and I bought it from an aircraft uh, mechanic. I have this. Now this belongs, it is not an approved part, it just blocks the air, that's all it does. And uh, what I've done with this is I have it installed underneath the airflow outlet, you know, or just on the aft end of the engine and it acts much the same as a, say, a cowl flap. Uh, it, except it's, this is a fixed one. <laughs> and I'm going to show you, I'm going to go outside into the hangar where it's a little cool right now, so uh, bear with me. But uh, I install this and this basically restricts the amount of air which is dumped overboard after it goes into the engine. So it basically keeps the, the air in the engine a little bit longer than normal. Okay, so it has a chance to warm up a little bit more instead of all that cold air uh, you know, being dumped, uh, or the, the, the air in your engine, which is used for cooling, being dumped overboard quickly. So that's what this is. So I'm going to go out to the hangar, and I'll show you how I put this on, uh, and where it's installed. And I'll also show you how I do the tape end of it. So let's get out to the hangar. Okay, so we're uh, standing uh, by the uh, front of the aircraft here, as you can see. It's, uh, it's a little dark in here, so I got some lighting here uh, that I just turned on. Uh, hopefully the picture will turn out all right. Uh, but uh, you can see here I've got the, uh, the tape. And that's the uh, oil cooler. You know, the fins are all back in there, just like the normal radiator type stuff. And then what I do is I just take a piece of this tape and basically cut it to size. And it just glues right on top of that. Now the easy, the nice thing about this is when you need to take it off, you just peel it off and it just comes right off. It's, it's not a big deal. So you'll need two strips of this. That'll cover up, that'll cover up the, uh, com and that'll cover up the complete front end of your oil cooler. And uh, no need to drill any holes or anything like that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, or screw in any screws, it's, <laughs> it's not, not required. I just use this, and this is metal tape. Uh, I believe this tape's good for uh, temperatures of uh, uh, minus 30 Fahrenheit to 260 Fahrenheit. And it's, uh, I don't know, the plumbers use it for, uh, or uh, heating installers use it for uh, uh, the ducting work, you know, this sort of stuff. And you'll see it around your furnaces uh, where there's uh, areas where they just want to cut, uh, instead of being real neat with their cutting, they just cover it up with this stuff. So you'll see this uh, on your furnace actually. And you can buy this stuff at your local uh, Home Depot and uh, Home Hardware, you name it, Lowe's, uh, for uh, 
I think it's about four or five bucks and you get about uh, 20 yards of the stuff. So uh, it's uh, this one that I have is uh, Engineered uh, Materials Division of Franklin, Kentucky. Yeah, so it's uh, Berry Plastics uh, has this, uh, they make this stuff. So you can look, and it's made in the U.S. of A. So uh, it's, uh, it's not a, a Chinese product. So uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's approved. <laughs> Anyway, that, that, uh, that's what covers up my, um, uh, my uh, engine uh, um, oil cooler. And uh, just to give you an idea, I had this on about up to here. I had the top inch or so still open. And I wasn't getting 180 degrees uh, temperatures on my oil. I, uh, I wanted to, but the most I got and that was running at normal lean and whatnot because I'm trying to run this engine in as well. So I had the throttle pretty well wide open. And uh, I was only getting about 140, at the max, 140 Fahrenheit on my oil temperature. And I've got both the probe uh, uh, for the uh, Electronics International one uh, on my engine indicating. So it's got the, uh, the probe somewhere. And then I got the other one uh, which is the normal Piper one, uh, the instrument, and it, was, it wasn't anywhere near 140 or 180 degrees Fahrenheit where it should be and where I like to have it all the time, somewhere between 180 and 200, something like that to get that uh, water vapor issues uh, resolved and burn that off. Um, okay, I'll show you the other thing, what, I, what, what I've done to complement this. Okay, so I hope you can see this. This is underneath the aircraft, okay? Uh, there's the uh, the wheel, the exhaust stack right here. So this is your your new uh, wheel in the oleo and so forth. So I'm laying underneath the aircraft now. So you've got this lip that runs along the side out here, and one along the other side. This opening out here. So what I do is I have a piece of aluminum that covers this area like this. That's that piece of aluminum that I showed you uh, when we were sitting in the office. Now I'm going to install that so you can see what it looks like after I after I get it installed here. Okay so this piece of aluminum if you're gonna cut one it'll have to be about uh, uh, 20, 22 inches by maybe 11 inches and then you got a little bit uh, left to, to cut out uh, you've got to cut out the uh, you know the area for where your um, your muffler your exhaust stack comes out that's this and then the area just where your wheel will or where your wheel um, comes down so uh, you know, that's something you'd have to figure out by uh, whatever opening you have down there. Well, that's that side done. Now let's get to the other side. Okay, I just used a screwdriver to align them to uh, just initially start them, and then I just finished doing it this way. So you can see why you need the uh, this cutout here because of your uh, nose wheel oleo and your well your gear, but that uh, that's hanging down. So that's basically it. It, uh, it fastens on the inside, by the way. Uh, so the lip goes beyond that. Uh, so uh, not on the outside, like the aluminum doesn't go on this side, it goes on the outside. Or, uh, <laughs> the aluminum goes on the uh, inside, not the outside. So you're basically using the aircraft structure to pull this in. So this is the cutout here for your uh, exhaust stack from your muffler. And that's it. So the only area that uh, 
has uh, air coming through would be this area instead of this whole complete area out here. Now if things get too hot you can always just pull off some of the tape off the front of your oil cooler. But uh, you know if it if temperatures get too hot you know obviously this has got to come off but uh, uh, you know this uh, for this part of the world this uh, looks like uh, a good out for me. Anyway let's crawl from underneath this airplane because uh, Laying on my back here, my knees are killing me. So let's get get back in the office. Okay, folks, I'm uh, back in the office. As you can see, where it's actually nice and warm, it's uh, heating up quite nicely in here uh, with my uh, propane heater that I've got in here. And uh, the uh, the temperature outside actually in the hangar was uh, probably around two ish, two degrees centigrade, and it's getting to be around eighteen degrees centigrade in here. Anyway, uh, that's what I use for my, um, my setup for uh, keeping the oil temperature up to snuff according to the uh, cold weather uh, information that I have from Lycoming. And uh, so it's just, yep, this tape and that metal plate that I have on the bottom. Now that metal plate is totally optional. I, I haven't seen it before. Uh, it came with the aircraft and like I said the uh, aircraft I purchased that from an aircraft mechanic and uh, It seemed to work for him say utilize something to keep the temperatures above the oil minimum oil temperatures And I mean there was all sorts of ways you did it in the earlier days uh, You used a very thin oil, but now they've got so many different types of oil that you can use synthetics and whatnot So it, it's all changed quite a bit, but in the days when I was flying uh, my little Cessna 140 uh, just a, a hinged flap uh, right where the uh, airflow went over uh, overboard uh, underneath the aircraft uh, just a little hinge flap uh, uh, with a uh, thing that you'd adjusted or a knob that you'd adjusted with in the uh, in the cockpit uh, uh, that seemed to do the thing so uh, that that's uh, that's the way I do it folks and uh, like I said uh, certified non-certified I don't really know all I know is it seems to work and as far as blocking off that oil cooler well that's what everybody seems to do uh, and I have yet actually to see something that's put out by uh, uh, by Piper, uh, like a like an official winter kit. Uh, I I've never seen one. I've I've seen people make them, um, and uh, I've seen somebody that says it, it is an official winter kit. And I think they spend about seventy or eighty bucks on a piece of aluminum, but uh, that that's fine. Uh, you know, whatever you turns your crank. Uh, but uh, you know, five bucks, and it'll last you many winters. I'll tell you that. I've had this for I don't know how long. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems to work. All you need to do is block off that airflow into your uh, oil uh, cooler. That's about it, folks. That's all I've got for you. So uh, if you're uh, liking uh, my videos, uh, and there's uh, over 200, I must be getting close to 300 in there now, uh, videos, uh, uh, you know, subscribe, get that little, click that little uh, subscribe button on the bottom of your screen there. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, try and put out more videos as uh, time goes on here. Uh, the unfortunate part about putting out videos now, I just can't put out the airplane flying videos anymore. Uh, it's um, with all this uh, worldwide situation that we've got right now, uh, going somewhere is, is pretty restrictive. I mean, now we're getting lockdowns in different provinces, uh, let alone, uh, you know, being able to fly south of the border. So, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what uh, or how much... So that kind of restricts me as far as uh, uh, making videos, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll try our best and uh, keep it going here for you. So uh, take care and uh, like I said, bottom right hand corner is the subscribe button. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell as well and then at least you'll, uh, you'll be notified when I upload another one. So thanks for watching folks and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye now.